He's got a question. 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 You said Dora Salam authentic. Show me that. Show me that. You said you made a claim. You made a claim. Jono. Jono. He's got a question. He's got a question. Why don't you record it? Oh, well, record it. Yeah. Go ahead, record it. Okay, um, let me, uh, because I wasn't really recording. And of, of course, if Sarah, if you want to... Oh, no, no, it's fine. You, you can record it. It's fine. So, yeah, you, you, you do the interview with him. Okay, um, hopefully. Yeah. So, what was the question you had? So, it's a pretty easy question. So, I, I was raised a Christian, I've been one pretty much all my life. Up until I say the last couple of years, I've been disenfranchised, disenchanted with Christianity a little bit. So, my goal today is to come and not speak to Christians and ask them this question. Now, I've observed. Well, first of all, what is the benefit in having a place that in being a Christian? What is the benefit for a human being? So, I mean, I'm obviously, like, the benefit depends on the presupposition you have about what benefits you want in life. But it's about having your sins forgiven. Yeah, it's about having your sins forgiven. It was also about having a relationship with the Creator who has made us. That, that God has become man so that we may ascend to that position which we are called for. It's about knowing our journey in life, knowing what we were created for. It's very, these things are important. Having a relationship with the one who's created us and created us as an image is very important for us as human beings to be able to relate to each other. Like you find this in many people in Matthew 5, of course, being a list of the Beatitudes, Matthew 6 and 7. The, the commandments, the way, the character of Jesus Christ has been formulated in this culture so much that things like love your neighbour as yourself, things like justice, things like courts, things like law are taken for granted, even though these things come out of Christian ideals. Um, so then, the other thing that I sort of come to realise is that the relationship one has with God, for me, feels very much more so one way than a two way street. I'll tell you what I mean. You can read the scriptures in the Bible and understand what you think God requires of you. Worship, prayer, preach the word, because you don't want to keep it yourself, let others into the fold. This is what he wants from you, right? From an individual. What the average man and woman would want from God, who is all powerful, would be perhaps something like protection, perhaps something like maybe curing from a disease, perhaps something like allow a woman to carry a child full term. Yeah, right? These are things that human beings would require from the Almighty God, right? But what I found is we do our part when if you are serving, if you're a worshiper or faithful and give God what God requires. But we get what we want when our life course is done. It's the promises of what's to come. When, That's not true. Aside from, for example, what you get in here in terms of thought in here. So if God makes you feel good, maybe you read a spell or something in the Bible that makes you feel good or uplifted you from a difficult situation. So aside from like emotional and mental, what are the benefits of we getting from God within our life? I would argue within that, our life. I would argue that these benefits are conducive to us. They're conducive to our relationship with the Creator. First of all, when the Lord does protect me, there's been many instances where I could have been attacked, even at this very point, could have been killed and stabbed, and yet the Lord is protecting me from that. As a guarantee? I, 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 what, what do you mean by guarantee? Like, you mean like she's been on a cloud showing himself? And been like, I'm coming at this very open-minded. So what I mean is, I, I, when, when I do preach the word, and when I do do his will, I find that a lot of things are easy for me to uh, get away with, or a lot of things are easy well, Christians do die in general. Christians do die. I'm not, so that's not Christian that would be a special protection. I, I wouldn't argue that. I wouldn't argue that. I would say in my personal okay. experience. Okay. But I would argue that it's conducive to my relationship with Christ that I have a being in the first place. And that's where I've been value from it. The value isn't always going to help 
help me in this life. Because this life is meaningless. The Bible says in Mark Ecclesiastes that this life has no meaning. It's that life forever. It's that eternal but that has needs. Far more meaning. But you have needs in this life. What do you think like those needs are? Multiple different needs are human beings. So, so name a name of them. So, name of them. Some individuals could say they want more, a better economic situation. Than that, that's the point. The point is that these things in this world, they perish. All things to decay and fall. That's what, that's what the Bible makes clear. If things decay and fall, what is there to continue? That's the argument. And I would say because the soul by nature naturally continues, because we have been, those of us who have been regenerated, been born again by the Spirit, ultimately we seek our eternity. Even the even Bible says, I think it's in Ecclesiastes 9, that the Lord has put eternity on our hearts. Eternity is, is like that world's been in our hearts. But if we, that's if we choose to seek after that world's Christ gives us that world's and regenerates us so that we can know who we are, we can find meaning in our lives. And when we find meaning in our lives, we can often do great things. We can often change societies, as many Christians have done to society and others. I would say like that the motive of believing in God isn't because we're going to get some worldly or carnal thing. The motive of believing in God is because the things we will receive will not die. They will not perish. This life will pass away. And every instance of pain or every instance of uh, struggle will pass away. But life eternal will continue if we believe on Him. That's the important thing. Can I add to that as well? Everyone adds to that. Yeah, can I just say that the benefits from knowing God is that He's the Almighty. He's the creator of the universe. There's nothing greater than Him. Having that personal, intimate relationship with Him, being able to know Him and love Him and have fellowship with Him, uh, there's no greater blessing than that. And so even if you suffer every day of your life here now on this earth, even if you suffer every day here, now on this earth having that relationship with him just makes everything good so even on your darkest days you can still see the hope you can still see the joy you can still see the love you can still see the peace when i look around the creation i'm looking in awe and amazement at god who made it i'm looking at awe at god for the fact that there's so much evil in the world and yet he works it all out for his good for our good and for his glory i'm looking at the amazement of god when i look at jesus christ and i look at how God came into his creation and lived a perfect life and suffered and died on that cross for us, but God himself did that for us. And so for me, the benefits of knowing God isn't about, you know, what do I get out of it? Why, it's why like, is it not that though? Why is it not, it's, why it's do you like, not want something out of that relationship? Because I get everything out of it just by knowing him, yeah, loving him. He satisfies my every desire because I know him and I love him and I have a relationship with him. And just being able to talk to him and have fellowship with the creator of the universe and knowing that he's there for me no matter what. He's there for me on my good days and he's there for me on my bad days. He teaches me his ways. He teaches me through his word. He teaches me the way I'm supposed to live. He teaches me everything. Being able to have that kind of relationship with him, it, it, I get so much from that. I get more. I would never get that from any human. I would never get that. Can't he do more? He does not I don't need any more. For example, again, if a woman's pregnant, why can't God assist her? Especially if she believes in him. She's a Christian, for example. But the thing Why is, we can't assist that pregnancy to come through to every time for a Christian. Because we're going to suffer in this world. That Jesus said that. He said that in the world you have trouble, tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. We we're not we're in the world, but we're not of the world. This world is not our home. We are in a wilderness season. We are we are basically we are you know like the Jews. They spent forty. They got took out the promised land and they were in the wilderness for forty years. That wasn't the promised land. That wasn't their home. The best was yet to come. God kept them, he fed them, he clothed them, they suffered in that wilderness season, but he eventually took them into the promised land. Well, that was a foreshadowing of what, you know, we're slaves to our sin. God sent us a redeemer, just like Moses, Jesus Christ. We're now in like a type of wilderness season. The promised land is our eternity with God forever in paradise, in the new heaven and the new earth. And, you know, and we will have trials and tribulations as well, but we have joy, we have peace, we have love, we have Jesus. And I, I, there's no relationship greater. You, we, you know what? God 
don't need nothing from us. Supermarket. You said that God needs our prayers and God needs our two prayers. No, but you get the benefit out of praying. You get the benefit out of worshiping Him. You get the benefit out of reading the Bible. He might say that. to do something in order for like. So how does God select whoever you're going to be saying, for example, or the next man? No, it's between. You got to do something. No, no, you don't. You have to put your trust in Jesus. That's the thing. People think that by being a good person, they're going to receive salvation. But nobody is good in this world. And so Jesus, even though we're still we were sinners, even though we were dead in our sin, Jesus came into His creation and He suffered and died on the cross for our sins to give us eternal life. That while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So, yeah? have to do nothing. so all you put you do if you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sin, Ephesians two a, He'll save you. He'll regenerate you. It's that easy. He'll give you a new heart. He'll put the Holy Spirit in you, and He'll bring you into relationship. And you get the full benefit out of being in that relationship. God gets the glory. You get just by acknowledging Jesus and taking as your him Lord, in. when you acknowledge Jesus, as Lord and Savior. when you put your trust in Him for the forgiveness of sin, when you stop thinking that you're righteous because you go to church, when you stop thinking that you're righteous because you read the Bible, when you stop thinking that you're righteous because you do all of this stuff, and you say, Lord, I'm mercy on me, a sinner, I have no righteousness of my own, and then you trust in Jesus Christ, and He's right to get you to heaven. He'll give you a new heart, put His Spirit in you, and you will get the benefits of being in that relationship with God. So, is it fair to say someone like yourself you like being a Christian because you like your relationship with God, your personal relationship with God? Is that what keeps you a Christian? You it's Jesus. Jesus is the reason I'm a Christian. Your, your personal relationship. Yeah. Yes. It's not religion. It's not about religion. It's not about. Wait, it's not people say personal relationship, but yeah. like, I'm, I'm gonna, like in, in, in realistic terms, like someone can say, "I've got a personal relationship with Christ," right? Yeah. What does that look like apart from I'm reading about Christ in the in, in the Bible? I just want to give, if I want to give you one more. Verse. Okay, you love him. You're reading about him, and maybe you're praying. What else can it be other than that? Well, can I give you my can I share my? Yeah, please, all right, well, Jesus is my he's my best friend, right. and he's my true love. And so I talk to him all day, every day about this. And when I read the Bible, I want to learn everything there is to know about. And I get so much joy and satisfaction out of him teaching me things, showing me things about myself. Like, I, 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 like you know, when he reveals stuff into, like, for example, if you're reading the Bible and you come across the Bible, like Acts 20, 20. It says that God's blood purchased And so you, you're you like, okay, well, when you show that to a Jehovah Witness to say that Jesus is not God, it tells you quite clearly that God's blood purchased So you might not read, you might not, for example, you might, you might not see that um, immediately. But when you do see that, the joy is like, wow, thank you, Jesus. You just showed me something brand new. And it's like a little child. It's exciting to learn about him. It's exciting to know all about his ways. And, you know, and you know, being able to talk to him, like when things are bad, you know, we go through trials in this life, and when things are bad, and you're like, Lord, you know, I'm here, I'm hurt, I, I feel bad. And, you know, and he just, he's there for you. You can pour out your heart, you can pour out, and you know he's not going to leave you. You know he's not going to fail you. You know he's not going to forsake you because you're having a bad day or, you know, whatever it is. You know he's there for you. And the joy and the excitement that you have from just being able to, you know, love him and and you know he makes everything good so for example like, i don't look to the things of this world for pleasure i look to jesus have you always been there no i was what, what got you to become like that in the first time? jesus saved me when from he, what but he, from my sin so when he when he when i i had before jesus saved me i had religion okay so i would go to church and i did religious stuff all right Happy. and you know i eventually Long story short, he brought me to uh, the end of myself where I was like, uh, realized something in me needed to change, but I didn't quite know at that point what it was because I would have said, Oh, you know, I'm doing all the right thing. Obviously, I was. Um, Long story short, I was very sick, I was bedridden, uh, doctor said I would never get better, but I did, I got better. And it was at that point he brought me to the end of myself. And it was at that point I cried out to him from my heart. I believed in my heart in Jesus, I believed what I was saying to him. At that point he saved me, when he saved me he gave me a new heart, he changed my entire heart. 
Instead of having the desire for the things of this world, my desire was for God. I changed. I changed. I didn't, you know, I'm not perfect, I'm a work in progress, but I changed. I desired God. I desired the Bible. I desired to love my enemies, to pray for them, to forgive them. I desired things that was new to me, you know, and eventually he started showing me more things about myself. And so it's part, part of my sanctification will forgive. I'm growing in sanctification. Yeah, yeah, I'm like a child. I started off as a baby, sure. not knowing <laughs> nothing. And as he's growing me up in the faith, he's teaching me more and more and more about himself and more and more about myself, which is not always a pretty picture. But he's teaching me how to let go of some of those things and teaching me more of how to live godly and do more stuff that is righteous. So, so, so if someone but I'm not saved by my works. I'm only saved by my faith in Jesus Christ. So I have works and, his mercy. and just Jesus. But believing in what Jesus has done, that's the only thing that makes me like this. That sounds easy. It is I mean? easy. But like, literally everyone could do that. But it, yes, but this is the thing. It is easy and it's the enemy that makes it complicated. You put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sin. You let go of all your own works, all your own righteousness and you say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner and you mean it from your heart and he gives you his perfect righteousness. He gives you a new heart. He puts his spirit in you and it's God in you that produces the fruit of the spirit and enables you live godly. Does everyone need a new heart? So yes. He tells you this in the book of Ezekiel. Jesus said, unless a man be born again, then he cannot see the kingdom of God. In Ezekiel 36, 26, he says, I will take their stony heart. I will give them a heart of flesh. I will put the Holy Spirit in them and I will be the one to enable them to walk in his way. So what about Adam and Eve? Because they never had a Jesus to like wake God up in the morning to say, they had a, no, well, no, but it wasn't about that. When God covered, when Adam and Eve sinned against God, he covered them in animal skin, Jess, but they still had to leave Eden. But they would be saved, even though Jesus hadn't come yet, the Bible says in the book of Revelation, Jesus was saved for the foundation of the world. So those people that got saved before Jesus came, they would look ahead to the cross. We look back to the cross. No, so they would still be saved for the sacrifice that Christ made, but they would be uh, that just in itself proves that they weren't saved by their works. So Christ would have saved them because of something that he was going to do in the future. The Bible says in Matthew that when Jesus died on the cross after he was raised from the dead, lots of dead people came out of their tombs because God would have raised those people that died, um, you know, believing in the future coming of the Messiah, the future uh, resurrection, the future uh, sacrifice. Uh, he would have saved them. That's why he says, I'm not the God of the dead, but of the living. So Abraham, Jacob, and they looked ahead. He said that in the book of John, he said, Abraham delighted because they knew what he's coming and they looked ahead to the cross. And so that's how they saved before Jesus came into his people. A lot of people have, um, like, the Bible has a lot of promises, right? Especially when it speaks about res resurrections and wipe out every tear from their eyes and breath yeah, yeah. of that, that kind yeah. of promises. That sounds great. And, and who's the one sent? Jesus Christ. How does an individual Believe believe that without because we're not there yet. until you're dead and you're there you don't know right no one's been there to come back and tell you I guess what this X, Y, Z way. you get to experience it now well you don't get to experience the full extent of it because we still have trials and we still have tribulations but you know where does the confidence come from to believe it? because it, it comes from knowing Jesus is it in the Bible okay it comes from knowing Jesus so it's about when you know Christ when he saves you he gives you a new heart the spirit in you the spirit testifies with our spirit that we're children of God and so when you know Christ you know that every word in that Bible is true you know that all the promises of God are true and he gives you his peace and his joy so that even in your darkest days you can have peace you can have joy and you can experience love when he saved me he showed me love in such a way profound way that I've never experienced love and even on my darkest days I was going to fall in the darkest of things in my life. I still had this supernatural joy in my heart that came from within. It wasn't because of my circumstances. My life on the outside looked like a car crash. Many but but, yeah, but on the, from the inside, I had this supernatural joy. What about the things you need? Like what? 
A home. Some people I don't have a home. home. But some people want that. Well, you know, I mean, if God wants to give you a home, then he does. But my home is in heaven. I look to the things that are above. The Bible says that in Romans 8. Set your mind on the things that are above, not on the things is in this world. Is that to help you cope with your current conditions? Or no, no. I, 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 I'm happy. I, I want Jesus. I want to serve my Lord. So yeah. I don't have a home. I, I yeah. travel no, wherever God leads me. Like and I, I'm okay with that. I'm good with that. Jesus never had a home. Do you see where I'm coming from? Because for some people, with Sarah right now, it almost sounds like an antidepressant. No, 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 it's not. It's not that. Yeah, but, the, but you know, it's not that. No, it's not that. Jesus is the cure. So there's a lot of people that have a lot of issues, whether it be depression, drug addiction, alcoholism. Jesus sets them free from all that. So he's not the antidepressant, like the thing, you know, everybody just believes it makes them feel good. He literally does deliver them from drugs and alcohol and depression and all that other stuff. He does do that. And even when we suffer and we go through trials, because believe me, well, I do suffer, I go through trials, I still have a joy and a peace. I take great comfort in knowing that God is there. You know, I don't care about the world or the things of this world. If I had nothing and all I have is Jesus, then I'm grateful because I've got more than everything. Well, I, I think don't care about the world and what's in it. Well, you know, I, well, I, everybody's at different stages of their walk in sanctification. So where I am today may be where you are, you know, some people somebody else may, may be still looking to the world. Like God, Is it God, bad then to want things for yourself? Say a person wants to be wealthy and a person wants to be healthy. Is that bad? Because that's not necessarily Jesus related. Really. Well, the Bible says those that desire to be wealthy uh, fall into great troubles. They have to always do that. No, but they do do that. I know which people who are Christians. So, well, Personally, I'm not. Well, Jesus said it was easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it was for a rich person to get to heaven. My point is this. When you look to the things of the world, the Bible says you cannot love God and money at the same time. Because it's where your, religion, where your treasure is, there your heart is. So if your treasure is here on this earth and you're, you're, you're storing up all these worldly possessions, then your heart is going to be here. But if you saw a treasure for yourself in heaven, then your heart is going to be there in heaven. Why doesn't you assist Christians in delivering full term pregnancies? Well, because, like you said, why let them down when they need you the most? No, no, no. Is that Christians going, God, please, Jesus, please? And they're not. No, 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 no. But that's the thing. Like I said, we're not promised to have our best life now. And we live in a fallen world. We live in a world where people suffer. They get sick and bad things happen. He's all powerful. But even if, say, for example, if something happened to somebody while they were pregnant and they were carrying a child and something happened to that baby, God would take that child into paradise with them. Doesn't make the mum feel really bad. No, it doesn't. But He would comfort the mother, and then eventually that mother would be reunited with that child. But every day the mum's gonna be thinking, but God had the power to do something about it. But you know what? God did have the power to do something about it because the reason why the world is as bad as it is is because of sin and because of the fall of Adam and Eve and so God even though he didn't have to even though he was already you know he doesn't need anything from us he took on flesh he decided of his own accord to come into his creation even though he lived in heaven he was God Almighty he never ever sinned and yet he suffered more than any of us because he suffered on the cross he died for our sin. So God, more than anyone, knows what it's like to suffer. And he suffered unjustly. He was perfect and he bore our sin. He suffered in our place. And so that's to restore the earth. If you read Isaiah 49, it says the Messiah will come to restore things. He restores the earth after the fall of Adam and Eve. And so we're still living in a fallen world. We still have this sinful flesh. We don't get our glorified bodies until we meet Christ. And so unfortunately... <laughs> well, the Bible says in the last days there would be scoffers and there would be people saying, where are you, Lord? But he's he's not slow in keeping his promise. It's just that God desires all men to come to repentance. But we all know that not everyone's going to come to repentance. Yes, but God at the right time, his timing's always perfect. The, the, you know what? The, we have, No, it's not convenient. We have trials in this life. You have to have faith. You have to trust him. He's good. He knows what he's doing. And no matter what, as long as you be faithful to him, he'll bring you through your trial. He will never give you anything. He will use it all for good. So if you suffer, if somebody dies, if you go through, you lose everything, God is good and he is faithful and he will bring you through that. My suffering has led me closer to Christ and I would go through it all again to be closer to him.
that's how great he is and so I'm able to learn lessons I'm able to bear fruit I'm able to you know to learn things about myself that aren't always good you know things about bad habits and things like that that I picked up through my life that God has revealed to me and I'm like okay that's not pretty that's not good to act like that okay well what does the Bible say what's the alternative how do I behave how do I respond and I'm learning things all the time and I'm growing in my knowledge of him and in sanctification and in holiness I'm a work in progress I'll never be perfect this side of the millennium but I have I enjoy letting go of the bad habits I enjoy saying okay well that's something that I don't like about myself and now the Bible tells me to behave like this I'm, I'm, I'm on a constant growing discovery journey with Jesus and and believe me it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun even when I'm suffering and I'm crying and I'm like Lord I don't understand what you're doing in this I still know in my heart that he is a good God and that he's faithful and that I can trust him and even though I might cry and say Lord why this or that I know he's good I know he's faithful I know I can trust him I know he's going to bring me through that I know that no matter what he does he's always looking out for me he's always got my best interests at heart if he says no he doesn't want me to have something it's not because he's being unjust or he's being unkind or he's just being me it's because he knows what's better for me he knows what's good for me and it might not be everything I want but it, he'll give me whatever I need I don't have a home I've always got a roof over my head I've always got food to eat I'm thankful for that because I don't deserve that I don't deserve nothing so everything I have from him is a blessing because I don't he doesn't owe me nothing I owe him everything do you wait on God to give you stuff and to do things for you what do you mean like, that's what you get I don't know say you want to achieve something I'm guessing you put it to prayer well of course do you wait for him to kind of like bring it to you so, so to speak or do you like take it upon yourself to go get what you want so you what, go get it well, it, it depends what it is. I mean, for example, um, you know, if there's certain things that I would want to do that I'm not really sure about, then I would take it to prayer. But, you know, I'm led of the Spirit. So if I want to go somewhere, then I will, if, you know, the Lord will um, enable me to go to those places and enable me to do the things that He wants me to do. So it all depends. And also the way in which we can know the will of God is through the Scriptures. So if the Bible speaks against it, then I can say, okay, this is not God's will. But if I'm not sure about it, you know, then I can take it to the Lord in prayer and He'll either make it happen or He won't it's up to him I'm okay with him making those decisions you know I like being uh, led by him I like being taught by him I like being you know having that relationship with him because he's in control and you know and and and, and that's a good thing because I'm not I don't know everything and I, I'm prone to making mistakes so knowing that God is gonna lead me in the right direction and everything else that I love you know I love it I appreciate talking to you it's been interesting well, my prayer is for you to seek Jesus. Continue to seek Him, okay? All right, God bless. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, uh, sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. No problem. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to say anything about 